What's up guys, I'm Firefly, and in this video I'm going to show you how to naturally earn lots of cash and XP in SnowRunner without cheating or farming. I've been playing SnowRunner for over a year now, and I love this game, I think it's fantastic, but as a deeply experienced player who has not only learned how to play the game myself, but also walked many new players on Discord through the same learning curve, I must admit that the game's tutorial and tooltips are very lackluster, and don't don't do a good job of onboarding new players. And because of this, people can be 20, 30 hours into the game without knowing really important things that the game really should have told them from the start. And that could make the early game feel really, really harsh, even though it's not supposed to be. Money and XP are definitely aspects of the game that can feel harsh early on, and I have seen people do all kinds of things to deal with this. It honestly surprises me how many people will just straight up install money or XP mods to give themselves infinite money and max level right at the start, or start using extremely overpowered mod trucks and get around with no resistance whatsoever. I always strongly recommend not doing this because as anyone could probably guess, it takes away most of the challenge, as well as any feeling of reward or satisfaction from overcoming the challenge. While I did say that SnowRunner's early game can be unreasonably harsh, this is absolutely overkill and will ruin the rest of the game for you, which is why I try to talk people out of it as often as I can. Other players will try to farm money and XP within the constraints of the game, and they typically go after time trials or logging contracts. While this is a much more moderate way to handle things, for what most people are after, this is probably still unnecessarily boring and tedious. Grinding time trials is very repetitive. Most people who are just getting started just want to explore the world and progress down the main quests instead of doing the same time trial over and over. And logging contracts have a different problem. Even though they are available at the very beginning, they are absolutely not designed to be done with starter gear or on maps with unbuilt bridges and uncleared obstacles. Even for those who like a challenge, these logging contracts can be a bit much, especially if you're playing alone and not with friends where you can have a good laugh with them every time you screw up. It can stop being funny real quick and start to feel silly and annoying instead. Logging also often requires logging trailers, which can be expensive enough to more than give back the cash rewards you earn from completing the contracts themselves if you don't return the trailers. Today I'm here to tell you that you really don't have to do any of that stuff to get plenty of money and XP. All you really have to do is just play the game as you normally would, explore the map and do jobs, but you do things slightly differently. And you'll pretty much always have more than enough money and XP to do anything you could possibly want, and that's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to tell you what those things are. So, I'm going to start with money, and the most important thing you need to know about money in SnowRunner is this. Anything you buy, anything, can be sold back at the same price. Let me say that again. Anything you buy, anything you spend money on, if you don't like it, you can just sell it, and you get all of your money back. I want to put this down in bold and underline it twice, because most new players come into SnowRunner assuming otherwise, because that's usually how stuff works in other games. Typically, if you buy an item in a game and you sell it back, you sell it for less and you lose money. That's not the case in SnowRunner. In SnowRunner, you can buy something just to try it for a few minutes, and if you don't like it, you can sell it back. And the only cost of doing that is the inconvenience of pressing all the menu buttons. You can sell anything without regret, because if you regret you can just press a few more buttons and buy it back. The game itself doesn't even mention this to you when it really should have not only mentioned it but emphasized it and put that message front and center. This one thing is important to know because it has major implications on how you can manage your money and all the other stuff you own. Like I said earlier, if you're not sure whether you like a truck, you don't have to sit there and think about if that truck is worth the price. You can just buy it, try it, 
and sell it back if you don't like it. You can even buy it, use it to do a job, and then still sell it back for the same price. So the truck would have earned you money and you still sell it back at the full price. But that's not all, because you don't just buy stuff in SnowRunner. When you explore the map you also find a lot of free stuff laying around. If you find something, it's yours, and you can either use it or sell it, or even use it and then sell it, as I said earlier. There are only three types of things in the game you can spend money on. There's trucks, there's trailers and there's upgrades which are basically truck parts. Whenever you find a free truck or trailer just drive close to it. At the top of your screen it will say truck discovered or trailer discovered and it'll give you some XP and it's yours. Finding upgrades on the map also gives you money in a roundabout way. Because when you grab a new upgrade, you don't just unlock the ability to buy the upgrade, you also get a free copy of that upgrade, which you can sell. Although you will probably want to use instead of sell most new upgrades you get, when you equip something new, it'll still replace the old part, which you can sell and still get a little bit of money out of it. Now that we know that you can make a lot of money by selling things, let's talk about what to sell and when. Because obviously you can't just sell everything right away, you need to keep some of your stuff to use. Let's start with what trucks you should sell. For now I'm not going to point out any truck by name and say that this truck is bad and you should sell it. Because first, a lot of it is personal preference, and secondly, I don't want to discourage you from exploring all the trucks in the game eventually, because all of it is content you paid for. What I will say is this, there are many trucks in the game, and they are absolutely not perfectly balanced against each other. There's personal preference, but then there's also stats, and in terms of stats, some trucks are just objectively very powerful across the board, whereas others can be almost useless. It would be cool if every truck in the game had roughly the same overall utility value, and they just specialize in different things, but that's clearly not what we have. If you want to prevent yourself from wasting money on junk, it's very easy, just don't keep anything you haven't tried. A lot of people don't like to sell the trucks they find on the map, instead they kit it out and keep it in their truck storage, even though they don't know if it's any good yet because they haven't tried it. My recommendation is that if you discover a free truck on the map, but you can't be bothered to try it out immediately because you're in the middle of something, sell that truck. You can always buy it back later if you do want to try it, don't spend even more money kitting it out and keeping it in your truck storage just so you can say to yourself that you have it. Selling bad trucks you find for free on the map is one of the best ways to build up lots of money quickly, which will give you a lot more freedom to spend on things you actually use. Even the cheapest trucks sell for a lot of money compared to most mission payouts, and a lot of them are also pretty bad, which means they're much more useful to sell than to use. So if you're not sure whether something is useful, sell it for now and figure out later. Moving on to upgrades, this is really simple. Sell any Anything that isn't equipped on your truck. This is something that almost every new player initially overlooks, either because they don't know that everything sells at the buy price and therefore they never have to worry about regretting that they sold something, or they don't actually understand what the X1 in the menus mean. So in the truck customization menu you can actually own parts without having them be equipped on a truck, and that's what the X1 means. It means you own a copy of that upgrade but it's currently not equipped on any of your trucks. You should always sell those because if you don't, you're basically just leaving free money sitting around in the menus. If you pay attention to the prices of these items, some of these upgrades can actually be worth quite a lot. A lot of people bleed their money supply this way because whenever you buy an upgrade that replaces something else, it'll unequip the original thing, but the game won't sell it automatically. If you skip over selling spare parts for all the trucks you've ever upgraded every time you've upgraded them, you can build up a lot of spare parts in the menus, which might explain why you have so little cash in your account. So make sure you sell spare upgrades and get rid of those X1s or X2s whenever you see them. The last thing you can sell for money is trailers. Trailers are a little bit different because although they do sell at the buy price like everything else, for each trailer you want to sell, you need to drag it to a trailer store using a truck before you can turn them into money. 
So there is a cost to returning your trailers. It's the time and the work it takes to move them over to the nearest trailer store. It's not completely effortless like with trucks and upgrades where all you have to do is recover the truck and press buttons in the garage menu. Turning trailers into money does take effort, which is why it's not always worth doing, but it is still worth doing a lot of the time. Whether or not it's worth doing for each trailer depends on how convenient it is to return. For example, how close is it to a trailer store? Does the route to return the trailer overlap with a route you were already going to take anyways to complete a job? Because in that case you can just drag the trailer behind you to return it with no additional time cost. I can tell you right now that there are a lot of free trailers out there in the world with very little use and are also pretty convenient to recover. Pretty much any fuel or repair trailer that's close to a garage or trailer store you can sell because garages and trailer stores provide infinite fuel and repairs. And yes, by the way, trailer stores are infinite resupply points because you can buy a trailer with supplies on it, use the supplies, and then immediately sell it back for the same price. So that's even more reason to not have supply trailers lying around everywhere. You can also sell cargo trailers, some of them can spawn with cargo on them and a lot of the time you might feel that the cargo is useful and the trailer isn't, in which case all you have to do is move the cargo using a crane and then transport them with a truck. You don't have to move the cargo with the trailer just because it came with the trailer. It's a package deal at the start but once the package is yours you can take it apart. Besides selling the trailer for free, if you want to stay rich, you also want to avoid unnecessarily buying new trailers, especially if the job you use them for is going to cause them to end up somewhere far away from any trailer stores, because that means they will be harder to return. If you just like using trailers, try to focus your trailer use on routes where the destination is close to a trailer store, because that will allow you to conveniently return the trailer at the end. You especially want to be mindful about this stuff when it comes to lock because logging trailers are more expensive and it's harder to reuse leftover logging trailers for future missions because logging trailers can only be used for logging missions and there's very few of those in most regions to begin with so it'll be really hard for you to find routes that chain two or more missions together. So that's cargo trailers. You can save on fuel and repair trailers too. A lot of people like to buy fuel or repair trailers and move them around so they can station supplies around the map. There's a much better way to do that and that's to use a truck with a maintenance frame add-on instead of any kind of trailer. The maintenance frame add-on holds 1400 liters of fuel as well as plenty of spare parts and spare wheels. While the spare parts and wheels are typically not enough to do most repair tasks alone, it's more than enough to repair the damage you take on your trucks while driving. A truck with a maintenance frame add-on is overall way better as station support than a supply trailer because one, there isn't the chore of returning the trailer if you want to get your money back because it's a truck, so when you're done with the map you can just recover it. But also, it's a truck, so it can double as a backup rescue vehicle if your work truck gets into trouble. You can't do that with a trailer because you can't drive it. So yeah, that's the advice I have about building up money by better managing your trucks, upgrades, and trailers. I suppose that for some people this might be a lot of information to take in at once. This section of the video turned out to be much longer than I originally planned because I realized there was a lot to say. It's worth mentioning that you absolutely don't have have to do everything I mentioned all the time, especially when it comes to all that stuff about managing trailers, which can take up quite some time. Even just doing one or two of these things I mentioned here should produce a lot of cash very quickly. If you do everything I mentioned, you'll definitely be extremely well funded throughout your entire SnowRunner playthrough from start to finish, but you don't have to do that just to get by. So that's what I have to say about money. I guess if I have to summarize everything in one sentence, it's this. When in doubt, don't hoard, sell. Moving on to earning XP, aka leveling up. If you have watched this video to this point, past all my jibber jabber about how to get money, you might be relieved to hear that I have a lot less to say about XP. The reason for this is because there are no shortcuts to earning lots of XP with very little effort. It's different from money in this way. You can effortlessly build up tons of money if you know what to do, because you can get a lot of it from just selling stuff you find on the map. With XP, however, your earnings are much more proportionate to the amount of work you do. 
Because of this, there is a lot less I can offer in terms of tips and tricks, and I really only have one piece of macro advice that's more of a general strategy, not just for earning XP faster, but just to progress faster in general, and that's to do the small things first and save the big jobs for later. Don't be fooled by the big payouts you see on the big contracts and feel the need to skip ahead. When you start to enter a new map or a new region, I recommend starting with getting the watchtowers and discovering any free trucks or trailers sitting on the map by driving near them. Each one of these things give you only between 30 to 100 XP, which is not much, but almost every map have a lot of these discoveries. So if you get them all, it's a couple hundred XP per map, which could be a nice XP boost during the early game. This is especially true if you're not playing everything in order, by which I mean clearing most of the work on one map before moving on to the next, and clearing the regions from left to right. If you're jumping ahead and you're starting off by just exploring all the maps and hunting for upgrades, which I know is something that a lot of people do, you especially don't want to skip over this XP you get from discoveries because you're already not getting XP from missions. And speaking of missions, when it comes to doing missions, do the small things first. It might be tempting to go after logging contracts right away because right off the bat they pay thousands of XP per contract whereas other jobs pay only hundreds. But what you can't tell from looking at the payouts is that a contract that pays 10 times as much can take way more than 10 times as much time and suffering to complete. So it can still be a terrible deal and when you compare the logging contracts to other actual early game missions that is exactly the case. Case. Logging contracts are frustratingly slow to complete using starter gear and on a map that hasn't been scouted and built up. On the other hand, a lot of the early game jobs are basically freebies and they can take under 5 minutes to complete. So yeah, the individual jobs don't pay well, but you can work through a lot of them very quickly. And a lot of them also help to prepare for the later contracts and make them easier. And that's all I have to say about XP. Like I said, not as much to say, but XP is also typically not as much of a problem as money. Most people struggle for XP at the start because they want to unlock better tires, but at only level 15, you already unlock all the tires in the game, and after that the only thing XP really does is unlock trucks. And combined with the trucks you discover on the map, most people will be unlocking new trucks faster than they can try them out, so there's not much reason to chase XP past that point. We're close to the end of the video guys, but before I go, I just have one small thing to share with you that is loosely related to the topic of cash and XP, and that I think could be beneficial for most players to know. I highly recommend playing SnowRunner by focusing on and prioritizing clearing the missions on the map in the most efficient way possible, as opposed to chasing big payouts and rushing unlocks. I myself played through all 9 regions on the global map from left to right with no mods and no help from other players in co-op. In each region I also tried to clear jobs one map at a time. I was honestly not bored for a single hour and it was a really good experience. I found nothing to be boringly easy or frustratingly hard. I organically stepped through each region and each map and there was always a steady drip of nuance to keep me interested. The difficulty of the game also grew at roughly the same pace as the power of my gear, as well as my skills and knowledge. The whole playthrough was always very entertaining and smooth. I'm not saying that you have to strictly follow exactly that, but more so what I said earlier, which is to pay less attention to the stuff and more to the journey. Because SnowRunner's questline really does a pretty good job enhancing the journey. I feel like that the more you deviate from the way that the game was designed to be played, the harder it becomes to experience its full value. If you use cheat mods and give yourself max level and infinite cash, or rush all the upgrades in the game using Map Runner, you make yourself super overpowered at the start and you can get extremely bored very quickly. On the other hand, if you jump around randomly to explore with no direction and you change regions every hour, you're not going to make much progress and the game can start to feel frustratingly slow or unreasonably difficult. So I recommend still having a plan, but focus on clearing stuff instead of getting stuff. 
If you actually made it to this point in the video, please just comment the word Azov under the video so I can tell how many people actually made it to the end. If you have any questions, concerns, or anything else that you would like to share with me or the other people that might watch this video, feel free to also include that in your comment. If you like this video, please don't forget to actually press the like button itself. And for more SnowRunner content, of course, you can also subscribe to my channel. My gratitude goes out to you if you do either of those things. Thank you for watching, and I wish you a great time in your next session of SnowRunner.